Welcome. In front of me I have the iPhone 17 Pro Max and today I will show you a couple of tweaks and the tricks you can do on this phone. So uh, let's get started by opening up our settings. And in here I'm gonna just begin by going down some of the list. So let's maybe first start off with the battery. And here we have power mode and we have adaptive, we have low power mode and uh, some other ones. Now I recommend having the adaptive power enabled. This will basically try to adapt to your usage and give you the best battery life possible while still maintaining all the features uh, that you would normally have. Because as an example, when you would enable things like a low power mode, the device would then disconnect from Wi-Fi and mobile data when you're not using the device to preserve battery life. And uh, that, for instance, results in things like mail fetching being delayed. So obviously it has some unwanted effects, but with the adaptive power, uh, this will give you a bit more versatility as it would only disconnect from it when it knows that you don't need it. Maybe you're going to sleep, the device can learn that you don't use your device that, at that point. So obviously it can disconnect from this and nothing will be missed. Now moving back, we have another thing, action button. So instead of a switch, now we have a button that has a little bit more versatility as a button. Uh, so going over this, we have things like silent mode, we have focus, uh, flashlight, Shazam, controls, uh, shortcuts, accessibility, and no action. I want to kind of point that out. Why the shit does Apple make it so hard to see all the other options that, that actually give you options? Because controls and, for instance, shortcuts, these are very versatile buttons, but for some stupid reason, they're grayed out, so you, can, so you actually could miss them if your brightness on the display is a little bit lower. So... Like, I now barely can see that there is something here. I can barely see this faint icon right here, uh, but I, I basically cannot see this option right here. It is absolutely moronic that this is even a design right here, but it's Apple. Let's not expect them to, to do everything correctly. After all, malicious compliance is what they like to do. Anyway, so... One of the nice options here, which is barely visible, is the shortcuts. When you select it, you can assign that the button will open up either applications or do some action. As an example, uh, we can, for instance, not select books right here because they're not here. So let's go to uh, recently played. So now when you hold it, it will give you the recently played. Now I don't have anything set up, so it gives me absolutely F all. But, uh, you get the idea of the button. So, moving on and scrolling down, we have display and brightness, and here we can start off with light and dark mode. Now, one of the benefits uh, is by selecting dark mode right here, permanently, any kind of content that is fully black, like this area right here in between, uh, these pixels are turned off, so they don't use any energy. Now, that obviously gives you better battery life. Now, right here on camera, this might look a little bit gray, but that's because I have a matte tempered glass. So that's one thing. Another one that I can utilize is under that automatic, which will switch between these two modes automatically, either from sunset to sunrise or on the uh, custom timer of your choice. Now, if we look at the next options, we have the text sizes. Now, these are options uh, that I'm going to mention right here for people that have some visual impairment as text size allows you to increase the size of the text while bold text obviously makes it bold so way more visible now with that out of the way let's move further down and next thing we have here is uh where is it oh there we go true tone now this actually is turned off by default so if you like true tone display you can turn it on right here like i mentioned off by default for some reason now if you go back now uh we can move over to actually need to search for it uh 
I don't remember if this was right here or not, but we're gonna quickly check. Okay, so it wasn't here. I think I know where it was. Let me just check. Keyboards. Sounds, there we go. So uh, if you search for keyboards in here, you'll find an option called haptic feedback. For some reason, this is disabled by default. And what it does is when you start typing now, it now will give you a haptic feedback to your to your types. Now it takes a sometimes like a reboot or leave this mode. No, there we go. Now I have haptic feedback. So yeah, you can enable it right here. It makes typing so much nicer in terms of feel. It gives you like a tactile sense that when you press something, you get like a you know a click basically under your finger. So obviously makes it much much better. And for some reason this. This is disabled by default, so I'd recommend turning it on. Now, moving on, uh, let's now go to customization of our home screen. So we're going to hold our finger on the empty space and then click on the edit and select customize. Now in here we can customize the icons. So we have default, dark, clear and tainted. Now tainted are the, uh, basically clear but allows you to choose specific color, unlike the clear, which gives you light or dark. So, use the slider, pick one that you like. It's kinda, I'm gonna keep it like this. So there we go. Now you can also pick it from a wallpaper. Let's try that again. Uh, like dark there we go so I picked it from this point of wallpaper so it automatically adjusts it to to whatever you picked now we also have kind of like a flip so the background is dark and then the color that you pick is the color of like the uh, image I of an icon itself and there we go light so this kind of uh, this will change depending on if you're using light or dark mode so basically what it is or you can just permanently pick it anyway um uh, well you know i'll change it to there we go clear dark and one more thing in there which i just mistakenly closed that you can do is right here you can see this box this allows you to increase the size of the icons but by doing so you also get rid of the text under it if you rely on the text uh, maybe that's not the option for you now Going back to the editing right here, edit. You also have some additional thing like adding a widget. So you can add any kind of widget from here to your home screen, assuming you have enough space for it, obviously. And you can also resize the existing widgets. Maybe not these ones, apparently. Let's try it maybe right here, edit, add widget. Oh, battery maybe there we go add widget yeah this one can be resized but it can increase it for some reason by increasing it it shows me less info makes sense so there we go now moving on let's open up our photos application uh, which i guess i'm just gonna grab another iphone uh, I don't feel like connecting to network to showcase this, and it works exactly the same between the devices. So um, let's go into photos, and in here, once you pick a photo or any photo, you will see this button right here. When you click on it, it scans the photo, and then using uh, Apple Intelligence, which isn't necessarily still intelligent, converts that image into a kind of like a three-dimensional image so I can pick this up and now you can see when I start moving it this has some depth to it now when this is enabled this toggle right here I can switch between photos and this will be maintained as you can see and it does have a pretty nice and convincing effect so let's see if I zoom it in can see it works really well and uh, 
anyway it works super well but i will mention there is a bit of a wonkiness to this so let's pick uh, this is a great kind of example so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shift it to certain side and i'm going to capture a screenshot so you can see what i'm going to be talking about so whoop, there we go and save it let's go what the come on just let me there we go so here's my screenshot so i zoom in specifically for instance right here uh, this window you can see has these kind of like bars right here now because i shifted typically the statue is covering this portion of a window uh, this is using uh, apple's intelligence and like i said it's not very intelligent so uh, for all its knows there is f all there uh, and it completely fails to recognize this as a window and fails to see the structure of the remaining of it so it doesn't give you this bar and just kind of makes it a smudgy blur right here it doesn't look good same thing goes if we scroll down right here so here we have plants now if i zoom out this will be a little bit more apparent uh, so plants right here you can clearly see that this is a plant and it stops being plant right here with a defining line this is also where this uh, statue is covering it when when you don't shift it and you can see what it does is it basically takes whatever color was in this and just kind of goes whoop smudge uh, so it gives you the color of it but not really the the detail that should have been there it's supposed to f generatively fill this area but it doesn't really do that too well so in certain wallpapers or pictures that are going to pick for this if you want to uh, play around with this this effect will look better or worse depending on what the background is and also uh, what the mm, the subject is so as an example here this statue is an actually a really good a good showcase of how well this works so going back here so this this shows showcases this really well how how good this works if i zoom in you can see this really well and this looks sharp looks great uh, if you don't pay attention behind obviously so this is a good example but you might have some other examples that aren't as good let's see if i can find anything let's try this this looks okay not as outstanding as the other thing this is okay Oh, uh, one more thing when it comes on to the background. The good background for these things where you don't see this kind of um, crappy AI fill is in wallpapers or any kind of image that has a white background. And I should have, there we go, this. If I convert this, this will look great because you can't really see anything uh, on the background as it's a white background, so it looks really good apart from the keyboard which you can see where the follicle kind of goes over the keyboard is literally rounded there so um in general this will look really good in certain cases but as an example this specific one looks pretty bad in uh the depth department right here where the pot is it looks it looks flat it, it something is m messed up right here or this doesn't look correct like the angle of it is incorrect compared to the rest of it so it won't always do the job too well and uh, this is becoming more apparent when you start like moving it around so keep that in mind when uh, using this it might not always have the best results now going back to our actual uh, pro max uh one last thing that i wanted to show is by locking the device gee there's two things that i want to showcase um which here it's not enabled, but I'll go to this. So let's go into our settings and go to, um, where was it? All right. So display and brightness. And here we're looking for always on display. Wait. Oh, it is enabled, Never mind. I'm just 
blind. So always on display uh, is enabled by default on these devices and it's enabled with wallpaper. Now always on display is basically a display that gives you just couple information like notifications or time. Not really give you wallpaper as that is going to waste a lot of phone's battery. So I personally like to turn off the uh, wallpaper itself and also blur wallpaper photos. So now you only get time and the rest of the display is turned off. Gives, this will get you better battery life. It will also show notifications here as well, but still much better result than having everything on and just uh, basically battery being wasted. Now in reality, I actually myself don't really use always on display at all. So I would actually have this turned off on my device but I know a lot of people do like it obviously having it off will get you better battery life uh, and uh, if I want to check something I can always just tap on the display like I did and it will light up give me any kind of info that I might have gotten and that's really all I care about now moving back to the lock screen let's hold the time this will enter the editing mode and now we can select customize and here depending on the wallpaper which maybe I should have actually changed it first so let's go back into our photos which I can't okay so I guess I'm gonna skip uh, changing the wallpaper let's try that again so if we go into customize when you have a wallpaper set you can obviously add the depth effect though it would be right here I guess you know what okay, I'm gonna whip out this phone there we go and when we go to customize in here you can see we have these two buttons when you have a wallpaper set unlike right here and you can obviously turn off the depth effect or you can turn it on so now when you move it it will you can see start to shift you can also click on the three dots and have the uh, depth effect added so now you can see sometimes when i uh, minimize it the ears go over the time so this is the depth effect but because it, right now it's covering too much of it I can do that so we can also extend the wallpaper it's going to generate a little fill part of the wallpaper and now I can zoom it in and I can have that covering the uh, clock you can also add widgets right here so you can have some widgets resize the time itself and also change these buttons right here so we, by default we have the uh, camera and the flashlight but you can change them to other ones now if we now select done you can see that okay we have a little bit of wonkiness happening here again with the generated fill so it didn't cut the, this correctly so you can see the ear right here is uh, thinking that it's kind of uh, rounded right here so you can see it's not doing it too well and also when moving it around this is not a great wallpaper as it doesn't really give you that depth effect right here so you can still see it partially but it's not as good as like i said some other wallpapers but anyway that's about it so if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching